Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The hymn we just sang is one of my favorite hymns. Thank you, Dorothy, for choosing this hymn today. It's been my favorite since I was a little boy when I was singing this song. I was thinking, what am I going to do? And those words that Jesus is calling, here am I, send me, send me. They've meant a lot to me throughout my entire ministry. And they lead right into the Word of God before us today. It was a perfect hymn leading us in because I'm sharing with you at the Gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read at verse 37 where Jesus says, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This is the Word of God before us today. Please be seated. Have you ever had to go for a job interview? If you have, you know how frightening that can be. Here's a list of some things that employers have said that are red flags if you're going for a job interview. Number one, bringing a family member or a pet to the job interview. Not a good idea. Next, showing up for the job interview without any knowledge of the company or without any knowledge of the job you're applying for. Not good. Next, doing distracting things like texting or painting your fingernails while you're in the interview. Not good. And here's one more. Wearing unprofessional clothing to the job interview like wearing a t-shirt that has the word written on it, lazy. I don't know about you, but if somebody came for a job interview to me and they were wearing a t-shirt that had the word lazy on it, I probably wouldn't be hiring them, would you? Here in the Word of God before us today, Jesus is calling his disciples to do the work that he's doing. What's the work that Jesus is doing? Jesus is doing the work of showing people how they can get forgiveness for their sins. He's showing people how they could have the comfort and the assurance of eternal life in heaven. Now, this was a job that was really not meant for lazy people. In fact, Jesus said this was going to be a tough job. Jesus said there are very few workers who are going to be willing to do this job. Now, what Jesus was looking for here, he was looking for people who could see the world through his eyes. Jesus was looking for people who could catch his vision for sharing this great news about heaven with everyone around them. We read today in the Bible, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the churches, and proclaiming the good news about heaven and healing every sickness and disease. Jesus is talking about heaven here, isn't he? Jesus is teaching and he's preaching and he's healing people to be able to lead them to heaven. And now Jesus is expecting his disciples to do the very same thing. Now, it was going to be impossible for these disciples to do this on their own. They weren't going to be able to, to, be able to lead people to heaven on their own. They were going to need help. And Jesus was going to equip them here for all that they needed to do this work. So put yourself into the situation of these disciples today. Jesus is, is asking you. He's calling you to do his work. He wants you to talk to people about heaven. And immediately you think to yourself, well, I can't do this by myself. I need help. And Jesus today is promising you, just like he did the disciples years ago, that he's going to equip you with everything you need to talk to people about heaven. First of all, Jesus is equipping us with a spirit of compassion. We read today, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then Jesus says to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out workers into his harvest field. 
Now, the Bible tells us that there is one big thing that shows that someone is a believer in Jesus. That one big thing is a love for others. In the Gospel of John, chapter 13, Jesus said, a new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you show love to one another. Having love and compassion for others changes our priorities in our lives. Having a love and compassion for others changes our purpose for living here on this earth. Having this kind of love and compassion for others, it's going to give us the courage to be able to talk about heaven with them. There was a traveling evangelist who was going around to various churches preaching, and at this one church, a local pastor came up to him and said to him, I have been preaching in this church for 12 years trying to get a man who's visiting our church to accept Jesus as his Savior. The evangelist asked him, have you been trying to do this from the pulpit for these 12 years? And the pastor said, yes, I've been preaching from the pulpit that he should accept Jesus as his Savior from sin and death. And the evangelist said, what if you tried going to him one-on-one -on -one and talking to him one-on-one -on -one about the love of Jesus and asking him if he would accept Jesus as his Savior? You see, we all want people around us to go to heaven, don't we? We want everybody around us to be in heaven with us. And a lot of times we think that if we invite them to church, that that's enough. Or we think that if we wear Christian symbols on our clothing or on our jewelry, that that would be enough. But that's not enough. We need to go to them one on one. We need to speak to them about the love of Jesus and ask them to accept Jesus as their Savior from sin and death. We need to love and care about them that much. Well, to finish the story, the pastor of the church, after the worship service that day, he went up to this man and he talked to him about the love of Jesus. And after talking to him about Jesus, he invited him to accept Jesus as his own Savior from sin and death. The next Sunday, this man came to the pastor with tears in his eyes, and he said, Pastor, I'm accepting Jesus as my own Savior. And it's all because you took the time to come and personally tell me about the love of Jesus for me. Jesus equips all of us to be able to have a love and a compassion for others like that. Secondly today, Jesus is equipping us with his power and his authority to be able to do this. We read today, Jesus called his 12 disciples to them and he gave them his power and authority to heal every sickness and disease. Jesus has the power and the authority to do this. And Jesus can do that for you and me, too. Now, it isn't going to be because of our skill or our intellect or our strength that we're going to be able to do this work. No, but sometimes Jesus uses our skill and our intellect and our strength to be able to share Jesus with others. And Jesus is the one who gives us the power to do this. Because it's only the power of Jesus that can cause one to accept Jesus as their own Savior from sin and death. In 1955, a man from Holland by the name of Brother Andrew had a passion for sharing the good news of Jesus in countries where Christians were persecuted. Now, he started this ministry called Open Doors. And it was a ministry that shared Bibles and other help to these persecuted Christians in these countries. He was an ordinary man who was willing to go to dangerous places 
to share the love of Jesus. One time, Brother Andrew said, I believe that every door is an open door. And I believe that as long as you're willing to go and are not worried about coming back, you can do it. Wow. Where can we get courage like that to be able to talk to people about heaven? It's only from the power of Jesus that we can have the ability to talk about Jesus and about heaven every opportunity we can. Jesus promises to equip us with his power and his authority. Then thirdly, Jesus equips us with eternal life in heaven. Jesus promises that through our faith and our trust in him, he gives us the certainty that we're going to have an eternal life with him in heaven. Jesus promised to that when he said in John 3, 16, we know it so well, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life in heaven. It's that certainty of heaven that gives us the courage to be able to lead others to Jesus and to heaven. A young woman was going on her first mission trip, and she wanted to be well prepared so she got this large suitcase, and she filled this suitcase with all the clothes and the shoes and the cosmetics she could get into that large suitcase. When she got to the mission field, and she saw the extreme poverty of the people there, it really affected her. It changed her. And when she left the mission field, all that she came back with were the clothes on her body. She left everything else that she had brought behind for them. A few years ago, several members of our church went on a mission trip to Belize. And when we went there, we brought all kinds of supplies for Sunday school children. We brought all kinds of tools to do our work. We brought all kinds of other things with us. When we were there and saw the extreme poverty of the people there in Belize, we left every one of those things behind. All the tools, all the supplies, we left them all behind. Some of our members even left some clothes and some other things behind as well. It was the love and compassion that they had for these people in extreme poverty that caused them to do this. Today, Jesus wants you and me to tell others about him. He wants you and me to do his work. He wants us to be his followers. And Jesus promises he's going to equip us with everything we need to do his work. Jesus is going to give us a love and a compassion for others. He's going to give us his power and authority to talk to others. He's going to give us that certainty of eternal life in heaven that we can use to give us courage to talk to other people about heaven too. Look for opportunities where Jesus can do this for you because you're going to find that Jesus will equip you with everything you need to be able to share his good news with others. God bless us all as we continue to look for ways to do this. Amen. Please now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.